what is wonderful about tonight and this episode is that we have Steve on the show because Steve is blind. He cannot see with his eyes. And obviously, we're all about critical thinking. And not only critical thinking, what this has led me down is a path of realizing just how much I don't know. So the best thing to do is find someone that lives it, because if you live it, you know it. Welcome everyone everywhere to another installment of the Elite Thinking Club. I'm Chris Jules Julian and tonight I'm joined with my co-hosts Liz Barker and Michael Houchen and also a very special guest we have on the show Steve. Steve, first and foremost, welcome. welcome. Thank you. Um, Steve, quick first question. Um, have you been blind from birth? Yeah. Like you've been blind your whole life? Well, basically, not not exactly. What happened was I, I actually got what's called retinoblastoma, which is a cancer on the eyes. And so I had sight for about three months. But I don't remember. Of course. Yeah, no. I can't remember what I, what I went so to. So that's what happened. Months. That's what happened. So I've never had sight, basically. Wow. Hey. And Steve, how old are you now, if you don't mind? 63. I don't okay. know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? The first six, I, I, we haven't been on very long. But um, the first thing I've noticed about you, which I absolutely love, is your sense of humour. I love it. Through life, just in general, but it's amazing that you are you have that. So, I didn't yeah. Okay, so let's just let's continue where we left off with the conversation. So before we came on the show, I um I asked Mike uh, what he'd done today, and he said he worked. So. Mike, sorry, Steve, ask Steve. What are you going to say? There's me. And he, he said he worked. And, and Steve, do you mind sharing what it is you do? So I, I run a company called Computer Room Services. Um, that's www.comproom.co.uk. And basically, we, we look after technology. We sell goods and services to blind and sighted people alike. Uh, we remote into people's computers. So if you're sighted or blind and you've got a problem with your computer, you can come to us, uh, Windows. Um, I'll have a go at Mac, but I'm not so good at Mac. Um, we also provide things like um, mobile phone training for blind people because, you know, everyone's got iPhones and Androids, but some people don't know how to use them. And uh, we can talk about that as well, if you like, how, how phones work for blind people. You know, how do you use that touch screen and things like that? A hundred percent. Yeah, of course. Sorry. When you say... When you say these things, like Liz Michael, it's not a, if you've got it in your head, you've got to say it, yeah? No, no, no don't hold back tonight. Okay. The, the only issue I'm going to face is I've known Steve for 17, yeah. 18, 19 years. So pretty much everything I've ever thought, I've already asked him. <laughs> the most, the cleverest stuff and the most stupid stuff, I've already asked him quite a lot of stuff. Okay, so okay. Down to I've got, I've got and I've already answered. I've always answered honestly, haven't I, Mike? Both, yes, yeah. So, so I've got the curiosity of a child now. I think that's the best way to approach it because it's the truth. How do how do blind people use smartphones? You cannot see the screen. Okay. Yes. Um. So if pixel eight, can you see that? Yes. Pixel eight. Lock screen. Fingerprint. Oh, device unlocked. Tomorrow it's Stevenage. Cloudy, 12 degrees, 8 degrees C. How's that? So it's, it's, yeah, it's great. The phone so is it's... talking to me, right? So what happens is when you when you turn on, if if you go into your, what what phone have you got, Jules? Uh, how, Huawei. Huawei, Keith, right? Yeah, Huawei. If you, look at, if you look in settings, you've got a thing called accessibility. Right? Yes. In there, you've got a thing called talkback, right? Right. And if you turn talkback on, it changes the behavior of the phone slightly, right? So what happens is normally a sighted person will just tap on the screen and that will activate something. Now, what happens is I'm going to show you something here now. Folder, travel, all the way. Okay, that's a folder called travel on my home screen. Yes. If I was to just touch it like you, it would open travel. But if I touch the wrong place, it would open the wrong thing. Does that make sense? Yes. Now... The way the way that talkback works is, if so, if you lift your finger now, and then double tap, 
the last thing you heard on the screen will be activated. So if I double tap anywhere on the screen, that's open travel. See? Okay, yes, yes. That's very cool. Same with the keyboard. So the keyboard works such that if you... Um, let me bring the keyboard up. Hang on. So... You want to say then? That's another thing I'll show you in a second. Right, travel. So you run your hand around the keyboard, and when you find the letter you want, you just lift your finger. And there you go, and it's in. It's amazing. It's amazing. There you go. So, um, and that works. That works pretty much the same across Android and iPhone, um, and gestures. So, you know how you. If you if you swipe right, you yes. you like someone. If you swipe left, you don't like someone. If you know what I mean, right? <laughs> <laughs> the way we do it is as we swipe. I don't yes. know if you can see the screen on the phone here, but right. as you swipe, oh, you oh, what it does instead is it reads each item on the screen in order, going top to bottom, left to right. Okay, oh. and then when you come to the one you want, you just double tap anywhere on the screen, and it opens that thing. Incredible. And that's how blind people, essentially, that's the simple way of doing it. That's the way blind people use the phone, right? So to bring down notifications, instead of flicking down once with one finger, you flick down with two fingers. Right. Right? Okay. So now notifications is open. Now. There you go. And that's a YouTube, that's a YouTube uh, video. And I can flip down to dismiss it or dismiss. There you go. And I can dismiss that. That's amazing. I think you'll agree I can use the phone just as quickly as someone who's sighted. Yeah, yeah for maybe even better. Than... <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. Same for the good. iPhone. So with Apple iPhone, because, you know, even though I, I'm an Android fan, I'm a fan droid, um, then you can do the same with iPhone. And so in iPhone, you go to settings and in accessibility in settings in the iPhone, it's called voiceover instead of talk. But the same thing applies. If you're blind, you can turn that on and it will behave very similar. Wow. So Google and Apple have done us proud, really. Woo! Yeah. 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 So we can do that. So we can use any, so mine's a Pixel 8 Pro, but you can use any phone, you know, that you have. And um, in the same way, just turn on talk back. You can also change voices. So if you like a female voice better than a male voice, you can change it. Um, you can change the speed of the voice. So you can speed it up, slow it down. You might have noticed it was talking quite fast. But I can slow it down, speed it up. And so it, it, that's a long version of saying that that's part of what I do for a living. I actually teach blind people. So I started my job in, I started my business in 1996. I own the business. Uh, there are three people in the business. There's me and my wife, Angie, who, who is also blind. And there's Debbie, who's my support worker. She's, she has the eyes. She can see. And yeah. she drives me around the country, you know, to travel, to go visit people and so on. And we train them to use technology because I started the business basically because I wanted every blind person to have what I've got. Right. That is amazing. In technology. You know, so, I just love that. Yeah. That's, like, that's the honest truth. So, no, and it, it, it's the best. It's just mm. great that you that you're you're teaching people to be able to have accessibility and and use smartphones and computers and stuff. It's There's so much really good cool. stuff out there. I mean, the stuff I could tell you. I mean, with a phone now, because phones have got really good cameras on, you can actually take a picture, and you can get AI to describe what it is to you. Yeah. Um, wow. And I'll tell you a story about that. The other day, um, we had a packet, believe it or not. I mean, my wife and I are both blind, right? And we live alone. So we've got nobody to read to us or anything like that. And we we got our shop in and we had a packet of bacon medallions, I think it was. And I I, I, I got my phone and I just, just out of interest, just to try it, you know, and I took a picture of these bacon medallions. And because it's got chat GPT in it, things like that, you know, AI and stuff like that. I said to the phone, um, tell me about this image. And it described the image to me of the, 
my kitchen work surface and it said there's bacon medallions on there. And I said, tell me about the medallions. And it gave me the the nutritional value and everything else. And then at the end, it said the use by date is just visible and it's 22nd of February. And I'll that go, is, I'll tell you. That is, that is amazing. May I ask, may I ask a question? Um, so like you set up your business and yes. you know, like you obviously um, use use technology and smartphone yeah but that's obviously in in um sort of these modern times that we haven't always had such technology how did you um uh, do, do you feel that that has sort of helped you um as opposed to probably growing up like you didn't have access to to, to sort of so much help or well, fortunately, I had I had technology before that because in in 1980, um, mm. I met a chap who actually lives here in Stevenage as well, and he he happened to work for British Aerospace. So what he didn't know about computers, you know, isn't worth knowing. True. And he was fascinated by the fact that I was blind, and he he hooked up with me, and he was a hardware engineer, um, and he built me my first computer, my first talking computer. Wow. Right? And, you know, he, he, he'd never really met a blind person before. And he said, what do you need in a talking computer? And I said, well, I need you to read the screen and read this and read that and the other. He said, give me about a week. And I thought, yeah, right, you know. And a week later, he came, <laughs> came and put this big box on the table, which was now a keyboard connected to it, and he turned it on, and it said, hello, Steve. And I remember this was in 1980. Yeah. You know. So, so we, well, I've had technology for a lot longer. It is the answer, Liz, to I've had a lot of technology a lot longer than I've had the business, you know. Yeah. So prior yeah. to that, like growing up and yeah. like obviously sort of school and, and teenage years, um, yeah. I can imagine it must have been quite something because obviously that was uh, at different times back then as well. Like I, I know that yeah. a, lot of, a lot of schools now have, um, you know, a lot of help and support. Uh, and you know, for for for, for students who may be you know um, partially impaired or sight you know blind and um, or any like it's learning anything like, anything like that, yeah. yeah. Um. So, but I don't know um how it was back then. I wasn't alive back then. Um. Um. So, so was it was it was it hard for you to attend school and things like that? No, no, no. Because I went to what they call a special school. I went to a school for the blind. Okay. Um, they do exist. There's one in, in London. I went to Linden Lodge, which is in Wimbledon. Wow. Did you have a dog? Please, sorry. No, I don't. No. Okay. No. Oh. But have you ever? Dogs. Have you no. ever? No. No, I don't like dogs. Oh, okay. Oh. No. no. Um, so I've always walked around with a white cane. Okay. Yeah. Um, and now I also use AI. So I use I use Google Glass, which is glasses. Um, I have... Um, Google Glass and software called Envision AI. And, you know, glasses tell me when the obstacles are coming that are head height and things like that. No way. Wow. Yeah. 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 Okay. I was literally about to say when you're out and about with your cane, yeah. Yeah. I know that there are certain things in place, like different textures on the, the surface of um, yeah. like traffic lights. They're bumpy, aren't they? And yeah, man. there's also, um, uh, what else is there for? Obviously, the sound of the traffic. There's, there's the beep, isn't there? The, the noise. Yeah, there's the beacons and you know the beeps. Well, I never, I never beep. ever thought I would live to. What do you mean? I never thought. I never thought because I don't think this is how people with vision don't know. think. You, do you know, know, process this. Yes, yeah. but of course, with AI, this you know is amazing. Stevie Wonder said, don't you? You know, Stevie Wonder is blind as well. You know what he said, don't you? <laughs> he said, he said, many have sight, but few have vision. That's so true. Yeah. You know, now these, not, these. These, these Google glasses that you have, yeah. um, I know that they are purposely built for blind people because obviously they speak what they see. So if you were no, to see the, me, would it describe me to you? Yeah, yes. I mean, it, it, yes. I mean, <laughs> if I took if I took a picture, it would it would say you know your the color of your hair and your eyes. Yeah, and, and I'm extremely handsome and good looking. Well, <laughs> you know, I didn't say that because that's judgmental. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> Some people hate the truth. Some people hate the truth. They don't judge. That's what I see. They also they also use probable words. Like for example, it will say it will say things like maybe a young woman. So 
no, they're very careful, you know. Um, yeah, when you're out and about with your, um, you know, like, I don't, I don't know how often you get, you go out and about um, with your cane, but um, do you ever, you probably don't so much now, but may possibly at some point in your life, did, do you ever feel vulnerable? Oh, oh, oh wait, you, there's always a, an element of vulnerability. Yeah, because, but it doesn't because... stop you from living your life. No, no, no it's, it's so not good. worth it. But I mean, no. for example, I mean, when you when you go out by train, if you're blind, <laughs> what you tend to do is you tend to book assistance for the, at the station. So you phone up the, the train station and say, look, I'm blind and I need to get to platform six or wherever you want to go. And yep. then you get on the train. And sometimes our assistants don't turn up. And so you're standing there in the middle of the station, you know, and you go, you just grab one of the crowd and go, excuse me, can you take me over to a counter, you know, yeah. and, and do that. So there is an element of vulnerability. I'm not, I'm not going to pretend that, that blindness is, is, is all sweetness and light, you know, I mean, I'm blind and proud of it. I've always said that, but you know, it's, it's not, it's not a, it, it's not an easy thing to be blind. Yeah. And, Please, sure. We've had a, we've had a comment. Um, yeah. Shout out to everyone watching on the live right now. Yeah. Just, just me has commented. Hi, electric cars don't make noise. How do you deal with traffic? Well, I mean, fortunately, there aren't enough electric cars that don't make noise. Most of the traffic still makes noise, certainly yeah. around Stevenage, where I am anyway, you know. But um, so I, I haven't really had to deal with that a lot, uh, to be fair. And also, th there are things like, um, you know, cars have to make a little bit of noise, don't they? They sort of um, yeah. make a swooshing noise. Yeah, so they do actually make noise. Yeah, um, and for my age, I've, I've still got super duper hearing, so I'm very lucky about that. Um, I I, bet. So, and and you observe more. I think when you're blind, you observe more. Oh, that's not that's that's not a derogatory thing about sighted people, but when they look, they don't listen. You're abs no, you're absolutely right. So you know, we we are happened to be in London. I. I walked out in front of a uh, electric van in London and nearly got hit by it. Oh, uh, yeah. This is how, this is how bad I am. I don't even use my hearing. I've got headphones in all the time. I'm I'm, I'm led by faith. I'm quite a spiritual person, Steve. So sometimes I walk out into the road blind. I'll just be like, you know what? I'm protected by governing angels and whatever. I yeah. I, I don't. I feel it. I said I try and use my senses, which is yeah. actually what I wanted to ask you about very specifically. When do you have? a sense that most people with multiple senses don't tap into because I can sense energy when I walk into a room. Like I can feel it. I wanted to know yeah, you, when yeah, you step I, mean, I, I would say, I would say that senses are also heightened if you lose other senses. Mm. So yeah. if you, if, if, if you are, if you are blind, it's more likely that you'll hear better. If, if so long as there's nothing wrong with hearing, uh, if, if you're blind, it, it's not that you can hear better, in fact. It's just that you use it more. Yes. But what I'm referring to is... What I'm referring to is pressure. So let's say you walk into a certain room. Do you feel the density of the air? Like you can tell how big or small a room is. Yes. And if you can feel a person in the room, can you sense... They would forget your hearing. But can you sense? Do you feel? Yes. But that's not... That's not... That's not feeling it. That's actually hearing it. Because if you, for example, go... Like that, if you flip, yep, you can actually hear the walls echoing. Yes, so I can. I can actually walk into a room and flick and know how big the room is. Right, you know, just by going. Like so that. that this then brings me on to something else. Your proprioception. You are aware of your body and its place in a space. Have you got a map in your head of your home layout? And then when you step outside your house to, you know, the, the, the road from the distance of your door to... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. I'm wanting to know how vast is your map in your head? How far can you go? Uh, do... only, only, only in familiar places. Only in yes. places that I've been. So it's the furthest that you can comfortably say you can step outside your house and get to um, just by knowing in the map in your head. I don't know. I've never even thought about it. Because you know? I promise you now, I probably wouldn't get to the road of my... Well, I'd get to the road of my house and then stop because I feel I am so vulnerable, right? I don't actually know what direction no, no, I want. I mean, no, I, 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 would, I would carry on walking with my cane and so long as I 
know, you know, as long as I know where I am and I've been there before. It's amazing. It's amazing. Like when you put on a blindfold, how yeah. you, you suddenly not having your vision, it's almost like I feel personally like uh, m m my power is gone. I then suddenly feel like, okay, I now have to rely on my touch yes. now and my hearing. Yes. And, you know, you're navigating your, 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 you know, like when you've sort of done party games, kids party games and you, you know, you wear the blindfold and you've got to hit the pinata or whatever it is. And you, you, you can't see it's like every day waking up and not, not like living that 24 hours. I just can't imagine. I, I, I just, I just can't imagine um, because the extra work you have to do in using your other senses, it's almost like they, all of your senses combined become your sight. Well, yeah, there is that to it. But I was going to say the, the, the difference though, between you having a blindfold on uh -huh. and me uh, being blind is that I have artificial eyes, right? So I've got uh, acrylic eyes i've got artificial eyes they're not there's nothing real about my eyes right okay. that means that no light ever gets into my eyes right that means that i don't know what light is so it can be light or pitch dark in my house and i don't know and i don't care yes and that's, that's why when you said came on to want the light on Jules, please, there's one video that's why i said to you do you need the light on yes yes because it's right? dark because it's dark but what is yeah. dark yeah. Oh yeah. What right. is dark? So Steve, you know what I'm saying. So the the difference is if somebody somebody who who, who was sighted, um, a teacher at my school, she was sighted and then she lost her sight, and she once said to me, the difference is that if you put your blindfold on, you can see the blindfold. Yeah. Right. Right. But when you when you're really blind, when you're as blind as I am, and you've never had sight, you don't have memory of it either. So you just feel something on your face. You don't. So you, you've actually your 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 senses, and how you've been able to navigate, are actually your sight and your power and the way you get through life because that's all you've ever known. Whereas somebody like like myself, I having had sight and then not, it would be. Yes. It it would probably feel a lot harder, maybe I don't know, to kind of navigate because and and the reverse because somebody asked me once, you know, what would you have your, if, you know, if, if I could give you your sight back tomorrow, would you have it? And I said no because it'd probably kill me. Wow, that's so interesting. You know, the thing I asked you that many times. Yeah, the the shock of actually suddenly being able to see through your eyes and you've never had memory of it before would probably uh, kill me. Wow. Can I ask you, Mike, uh, Steve, what are you saying? Sorry, Michael. <laughs> can I ask you, Steve, <clears throat> what, what you just said was profound, by the way, and I don't think many people consider that, but I have considered what it is for you to dream. Seeing as I have a different perception of life experience to you, I obviously have vision so I can see things that I can feel, yes? But yeah. you, you have got to paint a picture in your own mind so the first part of this question is if I was to put three marbles in front of you and you hold them, you obviously can count them. You can feel them. You know, there is three there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But if I said to you, what does 200 marbles look like in your mind? How do you see that? I don't. No. No. Uh, so I, I would, I would probably just say to you that, you know, it would, it would, I would imagine it would just put you put your hands through them and they'd all riffle through your hands, you know. Uh, so, but the point, the point about dreaming yeah. is if you've never seen, if you can't see and you've never seen, you actually dream in stereo. You dream in sound, purely in sound and feel, right? Okay. So, you know. Um, so, so can I ask? Yeah. Do, do you know you are dreaming? Oh, of course. Okay. And I know that sounds really ignorant. I just need to know because yeah, if yeah, I was I mean, to, if I couldn't yeah. see and it's always black and I fall asleep. I know. Well, it's, not well, I have... it's not always black. Because if you can't see, you don't know what black is. Of course. 
It's, it's hard to correct you there, Jules, because there is no colour perception at all. That's true. See? So I, just had, I just had to take a moment there, Steve, because you, you, you just blew my mind. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, we okay, so... With a brilliant, we came up with a brilliant thing, right? My, my wife and I, because um, Angie can see colour, right? She, right? she got a little bit of sight. And we came up with a little thing where I would ask her how bright is a colour. For example, you know, how bright is my shirt or whatever. And she would give me a note on a piano, right? And the higher the note, the brighter the colour. Wow. Right? And that would give me a, just an idea. It was just an idea for my own internal use of how bright the, the shirt might be or whatever. So I'd go, you know, how bright is that shirt? And she'll go middle C, you know? Wow. And and it's it's a really good way of doing and, it. And how did you come up with that? Can I, I, I just I just made it up one day and I said to Angie, you know, like, you know, think of th think of a piano and because because Angie plays piano a little bit and things like that. And I said, just think of a piano and tell me, you know, bright to dark, uh, dark to bright. So dark is the lower notes and bright is the higher notes. Just tell me where 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 colors are on that scale, you know. And it, you know, it's, there's nothing scientifically accurate about it, but it it just gives me a a flavor of. Yeah, you see, you see, Steve, you're blowing my you're blowing my mind with this. Because I don't. Go I've never seen. I've never seen black. That's why I had to correct you. So I. Yeah. I, I only know black as as bottom C on the piano, right? <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> but you're not. You're not far off. This is this is actually something. You're you're onto something right now because I swear to you, what you've just said. I I. Okay, when I listen to music, it paints picture. Oh yeah. And where where you're where you're on this, you're saying there's no science to to prove this. I understand there's no hard evidence to prove whatever no one's really researched it but i believe that most people kind of know but they don't know how they know that certain notes do create certain colors certain sounds yep. do re represent certain certain colors and therefore i think you're onto something there and also if you think of brighter notes as tingly tingly you know higher notes then yeah. you know you can easily relate to it can't you um but getting back to your thing um it was just about dreaming Right. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm going to be a bit naughty here, but if I was dreaming about having a cuddle with Liz, right, I would really be having cuddles. I would. Most men do. I'd I'd be feeling you and 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 everything else, and I'd be feeling you cuddling me back. Right. Serious. That's that kind of thing, and and there'd be no difference between the dream and reality, except I'd wake up and think it didn't really happen. You know, it's a shame, isn't it. <laughs> <laughs> if I never in Stevenage, I'll definitely come and give you a cuddle. Oh, nice. I shall look forward to that. Okay. <laughs> may, I ask, may I ask, if I'm asking the wrong questions, please do tell me. You never that. ask the wrong question. Remember what I said. The only oh, yeah. Question Sorry. Yeah. Don't yeah. ask. I stand corrected. <laughs> um, may I ask, how did you meet your lovely wife? And and like... We went to, we, we went to college together. So oh, lovely. We went, we went to college for the blind again. There's a college yeah. for the blind in, in, in Herefordshire, it is now. Okay. Um, and and we met in in ninety seventy seven. Oh, um, lovely. Yeah, and um, and we would you know we we dated for a long time and then you know eventually got married and and all that dubbins and and so on, and you know we both we both interested in technology. And what's more interesting is that I I love Android and she's an iPhone girl, so we have the odd fight you know about which phone is the best one you know things like that, <laughs> you know. But we, we we can both use them. They're both. They're both just as accessible, so they work both really, you know, just as well for blind people, which is cool, you know, that Google and Apple have done that. Um, I love this glasses thing. I am buzzing. Yeah, I mean, uh, our last episode, um, Steve, we actually spoke about AI, and I, po yeah. I posed the question, or yeah. yeah, yeah, whether or not AI is our savior, or is it trying to enslave us? But it sounds to me, especially through your experience of having this Google glasses thing. I think it's amazing, you know. It's, it's, it's absolutely amazing. I mean, we I, I do accept that we have to control it. Yeah. And I also accept that it, you know, it makes a lot of mistakes, right? But yeah. God, so do humans. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. um, um, it, you know, it, AI is, 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 is just as bad as I on its own, in a sense, because, you know, people form their own opinions and sometimes their opinions are wrong and they make mistakes, just like AI, you know. 
uh, but yeah. the only is that AI can process information a lot quicker. You know? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. if, we, if, I, if I was more prepared, I would have showed you, you know, tonight I would have showed you a, how it describes a photograph because it's amazing. It's absolutely bloody amazing. Um, but we'll get you one again. Don't worry about that. If, if you're okay with that. I took, yeah, I, I, I took a picture in my room, you know, and it described every aspect of the room, you know, and it said the shelves and there's books in the room and, and it told me there's CDs up there and there's possibly some Elvis CDs. And I thought, yeah, this is cool, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and and it's like it's like looking around the room for me, yeah. you know? Yeah. Literally like looking around the room. And the thing about AI now is that you can ask questions about an image, like I told you about the bacon medallions. So you can say, tell me about just one aspect of the image and it will go deeper into it, you know? Yes. Yeah, and that's I I I absolutely love AI, but I I realise we've got to control it. But this is the first iteration of this AI. You know, this is the first time we've been able to ask questions about an image, and I just find that absolutely fascinating. Yeah, it's blowing my mind. So I love it. Uh, I think so... technology is great and such a positive in this scenario. Um, it's so good that like it's been able to, um, you know, be 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 a massive thing in your life and. And help and 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 create and um you, you're able to to use it for your work and you know, yeah I mean just as another and... example I'm sitting here in front of a PC right now if I if I just hit a couple of keys here just bear with me right cool let's try this. Did you hear that? We can oh, hear you typing. It didn't come. No, did you? Did you hear it speak to you? No. Yeah, it's not coming through. It must be something weird going on there. Okay. It could be because you're on our. You've got studio. Yeah, and you're on our no, studio. No, no, it's not. It's because I've, I'm putting you through the wrong input in my mixer. Okay. Because I do, I do, um, I do audio editing. <laughs> I think do editing as well. You know, we've got we've got a funny one. Just out of curiosity, for one of the um, one of the viewers, uh, what was the medallions like? <laughs> they were well, they weren't bad. They're Iceland baking medallions. They were right. <laughs> we also have another comment um, saying yeah. you're amazing, Steve. Love love the energy. Absolutely. Yeah, that was something about that. It's the no, no, no. It's the energy, the energy, the, the positivity, and the um, sense of humour is just brilliant. It's oh, don't jumping. get me started with the blind jokes. <laughs> What's your best blind joke? Come on. <laughs> Hit me with it. Come on. So that I can use it going forward in my life. Come on. Did you know about the blind prostitute? No. You have to hand it to her. Get <laughs> 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 There you go. Sorry, that made me cough. That's brilliant. <laughs> okay, back to work. You're sorry. You. Yeah. <laughs> You're amazing, mate. You're amazing. That's all right. That's all right. In this, uh, in this, in this bit of lull, um, can you talk about your podcast, Steve? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you for that. Yes. Um, our, our podcast is actually called Our Place, and it's roughly once a month, and it's basically just me and Angie in the living room, just sitting there sort of blogging audio blogging about what we've done over the last month and things like that and in that podcast you know it may not generally be, be of interest to sighted people but in that podcast you find out about new technology for the blind and what happens and the stuff that we're using to you know you know like for example we've got we've got coming up in the next month or two we've got some new uh, zoom recorders um so they're they're digital recorders they they're high quality recorders and they speak. They've been made to be accessible by Zoom, and we're going to get one of those, and we're going to start talking about those and reviewing it, and you know, hearing it talk and things like that. So, you know, this might be interesting to some. Yeah, I think you'll find it's going to be very interesting to all. It isn't a podcast for the blind. This is like just from this one episode with us. I'm pretty sure, and I speak for most people when they say there is so much more. I'd be interested to know about your life, it's, it's about very, your life. No, it's very important. So, Steve, do you find, um, 
that with the birth of technology um, to to the how far it has come. Now I thought about this earlier, and I just remembered to mention it. Yeah. Obviously, before the touch screen, there was there's Braille, so a lot of people yeah. learned to read. Now, do you find that younger generations coming through will forget this? This. No, no, because there are there are what's called refreshable Braille displays. So these are displays that connect to your computer. And okay. in fact, I can't, there you go. Can you see that? A little bit higher, a little bit higher. Yes, what is that? That is a Braille display, right? That's connected to my computer. And you can see Braille on there. Right? Wow. So that means that as well as speech on my computer, I've got Braille. So that means I can check spelling and things like that. So Brilliant. I just, I just want to say one thing about Braille. Because a lot of a lot of people say to me with sight, "Well, why have you got Braille now? Because you've got audio books, but audio books don't teach you to spell." Yes, yes because Braille is literacy to me, and um, audio books is is passive. So Braille is active, if that makes sense. Yes. So you can actually feel the letters under your fingers. Yes. So I have this is a this is a Windows PC I'm on now, and it's got speech and it's got Braille, um, and I can read at any point because I need I need to be precise about the work that I'm doing when I'm doing marketing or if I'm writing official letters and, and, and you know doing stuff like that yeah um, and I mean uh, it, it, it's really good so this is another question then that I thought about <clears throat> yeah and I think you've answered it though through what you've just said so I imagine that Braille is one language. It isn't. It isn't multiple different types of Braille. It's yeah, just no, one. It's, no, there are there are different types of Braille. Yeah. Okay. So each so, each each physical language, yes, has its own Braille code. Okay. Wow. So like, if you were Spanish and you were blind, you would have a Spanish Braille. Yes. That's incredible. But so. And and so, oh my God. So does that mean every every language in the world has been converted to its equivalent of Braille? Indeed, yes. What? So sense. when you learn, you could learn Spanish Braille, and then that that would be the equivalent of learning another language, basically. Yeah, but I mean, you'd have to know the language yourself. So you, if if you went to learn Spanish, for example, you, then you would learn Spanish Braille as well. Right. Yeah, and you could read Spanish as well as speak. You know. Yeah. So then that, that that answers my other thought that I've had is that where I asked you about what the marbles look like in your mind if you were to hold yeah. three in your hand and that this brings me on to how do you see symbols? But I, it's obvious now you see it in Braille in your mind, don't you? Yes, yes, yes. But I I used to have a device. This and this is talking about technology. You know, you know, you were asking me, Liz, about what did you do before technology was around? Well, in the eighties. I had a thing called an Opticon, and what it was, and I haven't got one now, so I can't show you, but what it was, was a little array of pins, right? And what, what it had is a camera, and you'd hold the camera over a piece of printed paper, regular printed paper, and it would convert it into sighted letters, raised letters, Wow! so you could actually feel it. So I also learned printed letters as well. Wow. Yeah. And that's that was pretty incredible for for them days. That was amazing. And yeah, fortunately, I... the government bought it for me because I couldn't afford it. It was ten thousand quid, <gasps> you know. But they bought it because I needed it for my work in them days. Because I used to work used to work for an insurance company, so I worked for a an insurance company um, for you know for sighted people, you know, in, in a room full of lovely girls who were typists and things like that. So I worked in a regular place as well as start before I started my own business but I started my own business because I realized that th there wasn't there was a lot lacking in the world of blind people not making the best use of technology you know mm. uh, yes yeah kind of and there still is to be fair right. I don't mean you know I, I still see a lot of a bit about but it's getting better you know yeah um this this it probably sounds like a really strange question. Um, yeah. That's how my mind is. It's a little bit strange. Um, so forgive me. Um, 
it, I'm probably not going to make sense, but I know what I mean. Um, but because you can't, because you can't see, does that change your um, feelings towards things to um, like, or like your attachment to things? So does it like you don't see money? You earn money, but you don't see it. Um, so like, yes. do you, do you there? Do you Actually, therefore? I, like, I do see it now because I do see it now because I'm with Monzo. So every time money comes in, I hear it coming. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. The, the technology makes you hear it. Okay. Yeah, but, indeed. Um, um, but I know but, you mean. No, you you can still feel money because you can feel the notes. Yeah, but what I mean is, um, when I when I mean, way, if you if you feel a ten pound note or a twenty pound note in in England, they've got little dots on them to tell you which ones they are. So if you're blind, yeah, they do. Yeah, in the you, corners. Yeah, same. What in I the meant, corners. Like, yeah, like men, um, like a sort of emotional or mental, like, um, I, I, I meant like, no, um, no different. I just wondered if it was different because, because, uh, like, the boy, you know, it's it's visual, visually, we can get, um, we can see things and, and get attracted to things or, or yes. get attached to things through vis visualization. So I just wondered if, if because you can't see certain things, do you? Do you not have that, and do do you find it easier with certain aspects of things that maybe people who can see um, don't? They don't kind I of think. I think we have advantages over you if we can't yeah. see. Um, yeah. Yes, yes. I and, 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 uh, and I'm not. I'm not being funny, Liz. But again, uh, a primary example of that is um, if you know if if I if I fancied you and fancied you and wanted a date with you, it wouldn't be because of how you looked. Yeah. It would be your voice, it would be your humour, it would be other aspects of what you're like, but it wouldn't be your looks. Oh. Now, many, many people, you know, many, many sighted people will first date the opposite sex for their looks or whatever, Absolutely. and then worry about the rest of it afterwards. But I think that's shallow, you know? Yeah. So, oh, my God, this is what I meant. This is exactly what I meant. You've hit the nail on but the But we need to get to know things more, you know? Yeah. We need um, to go deeper. We need to go deeper. Yes, that that yes. So, um, yeah. so that's where I feel like um, maybe in in everyday life, yeah. If we if we had, you know, moments of t having, you know, of not having the visualization of things that might change how um, our attachment to a particular thing or how it affects us. I don't think it does, no, because you've got Sorry? other, you know, you've got other aspects of that thing. I'm just as attached to a 10 bob note or a 10 pound note. I don't have to see it. Right. Steve, Steve okay. just so you know, what you said was profound for a lot of people to hear mm. about people getting to know people before. There is an issue with society, and I know that you can't see, but I will try and explain. There are certain religions and beliefs in some people that cover up their body and only expose their eyes for that specific reason. They yeah. want a man to get to know who they are before they are allowed to witness what they are, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but and a blind person wants just to do that. Yes, of course. And it's very, very profound. But to hear it yeah. from you makes people realize this truth. But when they see it in reality, there is, if you will, a very, very negative stigma that surrounds why a certain why a person will cover themselves like that but it is literally because of what you just said and it's meant i i love what you said steve because it actually is how it should be so where you said where you you're blowing my mind where you said um you wouldn't date me for the way i look it would be personality and humor um it it and you know obviously voice and, and 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 getting to know somebody that and and so the relationship you have with your wife that that's pure love because you know you you love who she is and who she, you love her for who she is not for what she looks like although i'm sure she's beautiful and um you know and um, but 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 that i wish we could have that plugged in in but she's nice she's smart she's bright she's a good companion which is exactly what i want you know, yes, absolutely. You know, and isn't it like you know when people say I'm going on a blind date? It's like it, yeah, it yeah. it actually it's like it, it's not a blind date. It's just that you've gone on it 
and yeah. you set up on it you don't know what they look like you don't know but it's funny because they then get there and they see them but if actually they walked around and spent the time I know you say like blindfolds you still see black but like if they're both people were on were wearing blindfolds and just spent the day together getting to know each other without having seen each other I wonder if it would change would, well I understand more meaningful relationships about wouldn't it yeah, I, I get what you are saying, right? I understand what you are saying, but there is also, and we must be fair here, an element to visual attraction that actually makes us do what we do. For example, just so you're aware, Steve, we eat with our eyes. You obviously don't because you, you don't see. But for the, for the for us, uh, for us, it's very important that food is presented to us to look good. Otherwise, we wouldn't eat it. If it was all mashed up and put in a bowl like gruel, we wouldn't eat it, right? So I imagine, <laughs> well, I imagine food must smell good to you, to you to eat, but this is also for us. So if I was to see an individual uh, with my eyes, even if I fell in love with them just the way that you would, but yeah. I saw that on their face, for example, they had something that would, could be contagious or they were not very clean, if that makes sense. Although I've fell in love with who they are, I'm very grateful to see what they are because that does make me not shallow, but just aware, like mm. to a degree. Do you get what I mean? So although yeah, yeah but, I, but although but, we're yeah. riding this train of this is great, I understand it. But there's also a the very opposite very... to that though. The opposite yeah. to that though, Jules, is that you might look at somebody's face and see something on it and think, no, I don't want anything to do with them. And they might be the brightest person in the world that you know, and they might be just in alignment with your thinking. Yeah. And you'd be missing out on all of that because of something you glanced at. And that's why I said it was shallow. It's true. It's true. Yeah. It's definitely worth but, but just so we're clear, this is a critical thinking podcast. We're not here just to pat each other on the back all the time. No. We've got a No. That's the whole point. And and getting getting back to getting back to the the, the, the dating thing that's you know, that there are other things, you know, like there are like what, like we were saying, the cuddles, you know, the hands, you know, you feel someone's hands nice. and you think, oh, you've got the n nice hands or whatever, you know, um, or, or you hold them and you think, oh, they, you know, they've got a nice body. You, you can still think of someone having a nice figure if you feel them rather than being able to see them. If you know It me. must be so much more, oh, you know. I don't know. It's just, it must, yeah, like the touch and everything. It's just yeah. and not being able to see it and like how it makes you think and all of the sort of imagination. It must make the... In, your imagination must be out there. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, um, yeah. and and you know, people people think I'm daft when I say there are advantages to being blind, but there are. You know, I know. I think that's the best way to to look at it. Actually, I think that's the best way to kind of um, live it. I see how much I see how much people who who see miss. Yeah, in my life, you know what I mean. Yes. Imagine, imagine, Steve, though, that you heard a sound, but it wasn't real. And, and say, for example, on a speaker, you heard yes. the sound of a bird. Yeah. Um, I imagine that you're fine tuned, like with your hearing to the point where you'll know that's not a bird or that's a speaker. Have you ever fell in a situation where you thought you heard something that you did that wasn't what it was? Uh, I can't think of it, but yes, I mean, it's quite possible. We, you know, none of us are infallible. So yes, I mean, I, you know, you could get caught out with some I would still, I would still love to get inside your head of a dream. The fact that you have dreams of smell and so uh, sound and cut. Uh, uh, not, it's smell, not sound, touch. And touch. I'm currently reading like Sigmund Freud, yeah, on interpretation of dreams. And he's talked about so much, but not once has he mentioned yet blind people. Do you know what? The, the funny thing, though, is that I'm, I'm still very curious. You know, I, I always want to know what people look like. So don't be surprised if I ever say to you, what do you look like? And most people are not honest with me when they say, when, when you ask what they look like. <laughs> I'll be honest. I'll be honest. I'm very good looking, Steve. Very cool. Look at you, man. You see? People with eyes. They tell they me. They're me not honest. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me that. I'm glad you can't. I'm glad. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm glad. I want you, you to tell me now, John. Like what that. makes somebody good looking? And I, I, you I'm, glad, too. I'm glad you, you know. can't see me right now, Steve, because I've been really poorly the past five days. And um, no, I, how do you look? What do you look like? In I tell, I tell you what it is. I tell you what it is. People, people that see me visually um, would yeah. potentially have their preference of a person, right? 
And if, if I don't know what the spectrum is, but most of the time I would fall into that category of I like that. But what I also know spiritually is that actually what they're seeing is my energy. They just don't yeah. know it. But, yeah, hundred percent. But you see, you you've all scooted around it. I said, "What do you look like?" And nobody's told me what they look like yet. Not honestly. Um, I did. I said that I'm glad you can't see me right now because no, 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 feel... no, you you haven't told me what you look like now. Okay, you know I've, got is... yeah. I've got frizzy hair. Oh, um, yourself, okay. I've got frizzy hair. Oh, describe yourself. I've I've got um light brown skin. Yeah, I've got. She's a C. Eyes. She's a C minor color wise. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, Come on, Liz. I've got green eyes. Um, I've got long eyelashes. Um. And I'm quite tall. I'm like five to eight tall. Um, That's sure. I, um, <laughs> short. Um, I'm slim but curvy. Okay. Um, and that's it, really. That is brilliant. That's that's the best description I've had recently when I've asked anyone what they look like. Usually, they either overplay it and tell me they're good looking, like Jules did. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, I underplay it and go, oh, I'm, I'm pretty ugly or, you know, I'm, I'm not. I'm, 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 I'm not. Basic. I'm pretty you know, basic. I don't want a judgment of what you look like. I want yeah. actually okay. what you look like. I I'll, 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 I'll describe my description of myself. I, I will judge what you look like. I, I don't care if you're good looking or not either. And, I, I, you know, I'll make my own opinion of that. You know? Okay, so you sure just so you know, Steve, Steve, just so you know, I've got roughly the same complexion as Liz. I'm a little bit darker, but yeah. I... Um, and I've got tattoos, so I'm, I've, my skin is inked, and they're, they're yep. all black. I've got black eyes, dark yep. black eyes. My skin, uh, my hair is black as well, um, and I have a beard. I have a beard, and I've got short back and sides. So that's you know, all. I imagined you having a beard, to be honest. I don't yeah. know why. Just... Well, that's surprising, because I, I met a, a, a blind lady at a train station, and she asked me if I could get her some water. And yeah. she said, you're black, aren't you? And I didn't know yeah, how... That's easy, though. That's easy. I knew you were black by your voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how? <laughs> how? I'm not okay, well, that's, that was, that's easy to do because of the accent, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And I also have uh, long hair. I have long yeah. dreadlocks, which are black thank, as well. Thank you both of you for giving me an honest description of what you look like. That's very hard to get out of somebody who can see. Thank you. Oh. Right. And you, usually, Liz, what I do, I'm not going to do it to you tonight, Liz, but what I usually do is scare the life out of women. They tell me everything about how they look and then go, I go, so how much do you weigh then? <laughs> and then they go quiet. They, they don't want to tell you that one. <laughs> um, well, I, I can't actually, I wouldn't actually be able to tell you. One, because I don't have scales and I haven't been on for a very long time. And two... <laughs> I've been poorly the past five days. I haven't really eaten, so I think I've lost a bit of weight. But well, I've um, lost quite a bit of weight actually. I'm, I'm quite I'm proud. Relatively, of I'm relatively healthy. I do need. I will be honest. I do need to get back on my um, fitness. But like I said, I am relatively fit and healthy. So, um, well, yeah. Aaron Stevenage, we'll have some exercise together. There you go. How about that? <laughs> um, <laughs> well, okay. That's actually well. I've actually got talking scales, and I hate them. Oh, God. Do you? If I had talking scales, they Why? would talk after the first time I went on them, I reckon. Oh, no, when bashing them. When I get on them, they say one at a time. Oh! <laughs> well, listen, if I never... I, I feel like I should take a trip and do... Uh, we should do a, We should actually film us do, ourselves doing uh, some exercises. No, I actually go to the gym three times a week, and I love it. Absolutely. Oh my god! Oh, I mean, god. I hated I hated it today because I couldn't go because I I was all bunged up and all that, and I, I didn't want to do exercise because it's hard to breathe and things like that. But I I'll, actually I'll come to the gym with you, Steve. Because because um, Debbie Debbie, my support worker, she loves going to the gym, so we go to the gym together. You know, so she shows me around the the gym and uh, you know shows me to the mats and the exercise machines and the, the cross trainer and various things like that. Um, <laughs> and I, and I do the the treadmill and things that, that that's another thing I absolutely love it's very difficult for, bear with me folks it's very difficult for a blind person to run free now what I mean is you you go around with a cane and you can't really run free because you might bash into a wall or something like that you know something silly but if you get on a treadmill you can run as fast as the hell you like 
and and I love that, you know. Yeah. I love yeah. that. Yeah. I love I'm running. Gonna, I go to the gym a lot, you know. So you love running? Yeah. There you go. See? Yeah. So we'll have to we'll have to do a gym session, Steve. Got a lot in common, babe, haven't we? Hey? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. I actually love him. Love it. <laughs> Steve. Um yeah. do you do you have any uh anything you wish for people with sight to to really know? Is there something that's like always reoccurring with our that we wish we should just know more? Don't don't um I said I said this to Mike, and I was half joking. I actually said this to Mike last week when we were texting together. Mm. Don't don't be kind of um, oh poor blind man stuff, and that because I, I can't be doing with it. You know, mm. don't don't do the disability stuff on me. You know, I'm, mm. I'm, you know, um, I'm I'm not I'm not you know blind Steve. I'm Steve who happens to be blind. Is yes. is the thing. You know, um, I'm, I'm Steve first, blind second, right? Yes, and and it's a very big second and that's the the main thing i would ask you know be respectful to a blind person and i don't mean people aren't respectful but i mean um there are things that routinely sighted people do that i wish they didn't they 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 tend to grab hold of you and pull you about or you know and say that they're offering you help and really they're getting in your way walk up to someone and say you know can i help or how can i help and the, and let the blind person tell you how they want help, and then help them. You know, and and we we'll be very thankful for that. And and you know, we, we'll go away friends. Yes. Yeah. Can I also ask, what's your favourite style of music? Because I imagine that you've got such a wide. What's your fa- favourite? I'm, song? I'm an Elvis collector. Elvis. What's Elvis. your favourite Elvis song? Oh my God. Well, considering he's recorded over 2,000 tracks. But you didn't know that, did you? No, I didn't. No. <laughs> That's a very difficult one. Um, but at the moment, there's a there's a label called Follow That Dream, which is one of Elvis' songs, in fact. And it's, it's the official Sony BMG label, which is Elvis Presley Enterprises. And they're bringing out collector's albums. Um, and they're, what they are is they're complete versions of of these albums. So what they do is they bring out the original album and then at the end of the album, they have all the outtakes. And I'm just loving that at the moment, you know, where he's laughing and messing about and swearing and, you know. Love that, yeah. yeah absolutely I, great. As a little um, so as a little girl, um, well, my, one of my uncles, he absolutely, he's like a huge Elvis fan. He goes to Nashville a lot. Yeah, like, yeah, I've been there. I've been there, yeah. He absolutely loves Elvis. And um, so growing up, I, he always had him on. And my favourite, my two two of my favourite Elvis songs were, um, or are, Return to Sender and Devil in Disguise. Oh, I like yeah. 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 They're well, quite I've, big. I've, I've, funny enough, I've just got recently got the um, the Devil in Disguise, the Lost Album. Oh, okay. Right, and it's got all the complete sessions of Devil in Disguise, right? He did 29 outtakes of it before he got him wrong. Hey. <laughs> I- <laughs> no, I mean, I'm, you know, we're way more than Elvis. I mean, my wife and I, we've, we've got a collection of some two, three thousand CDs, something like that. Um, wow. And we, we, we belong to a lot of streaming services and we download a lot of music and stuff like that. And I, I take a lot of music with me on my phone. In fact, I've got all of my record collection up on Google Drive so I can just you know, grab it anywhere and listen to it in the car or whatever I want to do. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, and so, so yes. Steve, um, you're, you're you sell that as well. You sell that. play music as well. I'm a keyboardist. You, um, yes. I play. Yeah. Steve, you sound like the type of person I would love to spend a day with. Not because yeah. you're blind, but because you are you, yeah. I believe. And actually, I actually think it's because you're blind. I would really enjoy it. I feel yeah. like we would have... I would. I know. I've, we've only had you on here for an hour, and I know the guests watching at the moment are, are probably just as mind blown as I am. Um, but I, I believe there's like so much I'm missing out on simply because I can see with my eyes, like you said. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, and it's not. A, it's not a criticism either. You know, you see and you go around your business, and you, and you can do things often quicker. I mean, the other thing is, um, the other thing I'd say is that sometimes. I don't know if any blind people are actually listening to this podcast or watching, 
But if they are, mm -hmm. independence is overrated sometimes, right? I'm I'm a very I'm a fiercely independent person, and I've been all around the country and around the world in my time on my own and things like that, you know. But if there's a sighted person there, and it takes you half an hour to do something, and it takes them two minutes to do it because they can see, ask them to do it, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, in look, um, it doesn't make sense to to struggle when you when you got a pair of eyes there, you know. Like, I won't get my glasses out, my technology out if Debbie's here. I'll just go, you know, read that to me, you know, because mm. it's yeah. pressure. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. There comes a point. I mean, I don't, I don't use technology instead of people. I think, I think that's. But the point is, when people are not there, then I need technology. Yes. You know, that's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so you you be realistic about these things. That's what I'm saying. And you you, you find that you, you know ne never blind people should never be afraid to ask, and sighted people should never be afraid to ask us either. But don't assume if you know what I mean. You know, yeah, yeah. first, yes. Yeah. Don't assume you need to help. Just say, do you, do you want help? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, how, yeah. Can I, how can I help? Is how always can a good I help? thing. How can um, I and yeah. if if we don't need help, you know, we'll say, you know, thank you. It's it's a kind offer, but we're okay. Do you know what I would love? I was just going to say this as an idea. It just came to my mind. Sorry, Steve. I would yeah. actually love. I'd pay to be taught by you how to use a cane. This sounds so yeah. stupid, but it just came to my mind. You well, obviously use a cane to walk. I would love so, to listen about blindfold. In, in a very simple way to explain how to use a cane, right? When you put your left foot forward. You sweep the cane right, and when you put your right foot forward, you sweep the cane left, and that always defends the back foot. You see what I mean? Yeah, you are always yes, yes, yes. Wait, wait, say that again, because I'm just my first lesson. Hold on. When you when you, <laughs> you take a left step, as you, as you take if as you, as you take a step with your left foot, yeah, you swing the cane to your right. Swing, right. Okay. okay yeah. So that's that's protecting the foot that's always behind you. Because your right, your your foot that's in front of you has already found what, whatever's in front of you, so the cane then protects the other side. Right. So you don't trip. So you don't trip over. So you don't trip. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you yeah. don't. I mean, you, there are there are schools of thoughts. People, some people tap their canes, and I do occasionally because I want to hear the walls echo, um, and I can hear the distance from a wall by the echo. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. And. But some people roll the cane because you can get roller tips. So the cane's got a tip on it that rolls so that you kind of wheel it rather than tap it. And that helps you as well because you can feel the roughness of the concrete in front of you before you reach it. Yeah. So those bumps you were talking about, you know, in the road. Yeah. You feel them before you get to them. Yeah. It's all, it's all amazing. <clears throat> I would say, I mean, it's it's just been fun for me. You know, yeah, imagine you know, I do every day, but you know, yeah, it's been yeah. absolutely fascinating for us. And great, we don't. I say we, and I say this as a collective because I, I speak for most. But until having you on this show, Steve, opening the conversation, allowing us to explore, you know, otherwise we'd continue on without ever having the conversation. Now we've had the conversation, just sparks the awareness. And also minimize, like, just sort of brings down a little bit of ignorance, and then also, like, I don't know, like, it's, it's just made me smile. But I don't know what it is I'm feeling. I'm trying to get it. <laughs> I'm just smiling. Uh, you know I, I mean? I've really enjoyed this episode. I, your energy and your bounciness and your positivity, and you, you just, yeah, you, uh, it's, it's been very insightful and. Um, and you've just you've just been great. I'm really looking forward to these Google glasses. I know that they're made purposely for people who can't see, but I feel like I want a pair anyway. I feel like I just want them. Like I just, I'm looking forward to going to the gym with Steve. This is going to be great fun. <laughs> what? What? I'm, I'm going to get on the treadmill to Elvis. Yes. yes. <laughs> you gonna, you gonna go, so you're going to go to the gym with me and then have a cuddle afterwards, aren't you? Yeah. Why not? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> There you're you making know. sure you're getting that cuddle on you, Steve. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm not missing out. So anyone can find out what a person feels like. Now I know what you look like. <laughs> 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 
You know, oh. what people say, don't you? You're as old as a woman you feel. Oh, okay. <laughs> Wait. There you go. <laughs> okay. Well, that is um, that is brought us to the hour of the episode, and um, I know I speak for most people that have watched this, and I I've been absolutely mind blown tonight. Some of the profound things that Steve has said is blowing my mind. Mm. So, um, you know, I, I suppose uh, Liz and Michael are the same. Liz, Michael, do you have anything else you want to add to tonight's episode? Just want to say thank you for your time, Steve, and appreciate everything that you've um, you've you've allowed us to ask you and and that you've you've opened up on. And um, it's been very easy conversing with you, and it's just been great. You've got great name. It's an absolute pleasure for me talking to all of you. I mean, it's it's educational to me to find out what you don't know, yeah, and how how best and and I'm not being funny. I'm being absolutely serious. How best we can educate sighted people on on helping us, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Because I was going to say, Steve, we might as well make the use of yours. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> So, so um, I know, it's been an absolute pleasure. I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed it as well. Thanks. So, yeah. Michael, anything you want to Yeah. So I uh, just want to say thank you to Steve for coming on. Um, sorry about my shoddy messages to you. That's all. I'm, I'm so only going to get the link off. <laughs> no, yeah, I swear it wrong. I was, I was actually, I said just before we come on, I said, I keep going to send you a picture of what I'm sending. And then I'm like, oh. <laughs> what a stupid thing to do. Well, actually, uh, no, the, the glass would probably read it, wouldn't it, anyway? So. Uh, possibly. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, do you want to plug both of your, your website and your podcast again, just so people... Yeah, so the, the, my 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 email address is steve at comproom.co.uk, C-O-M-P-R-O-O-M.co.uk. And please, anyone, if you've got any questions about any aspect of blindness, don't hesitate because... As I say, education is always the best policy. And uh, my website is the same. It's www.comproom.co.uk. And finally, our podcast is Our Place, and it's at www.ourplace-podcast.info. Yes. And all of those websites I design. So if they look rubbish, don't tell me. <laughs> yes. I was going to say, Steve, is there anything you want to leave for? But yeah, it was perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much. Oh, brilliant. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for joining us tonight. If wherever you're watching us on the YouTube, Twitch, TikTok, you know, wherever you are watching us, however you're supporting us, we've got so much love for you. We've just reached 780 subscribers on the YouTube. That means so much to us, me, Liz and Michael, because, you know, we've been doing this for over three years. This is our fourth year and um, we cannot believe how consistent we've been as well as... Uh, as, as how many people are actually... As long as you don't count the last couple of weeks. <laughs> um, but honestly, thank you so much. We, it means a lot. Steve, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I've, you've been an amazing guest <laughs> and you are definitely <laughs> welcome back. You are 100% Kill welcome back. Okay. And, um, so for everybody, thank you so much for being here. It's always been what it has and it's love. So from me, it is Michael and Steve, everyone everywhere, peace and love.